Hello everybody. This is my new tube coil. I'll give you a little rundown on the specs here. It uses a 3CX 10,000A3 medium view triode. Uh, maximum power input so far is 35 kVA. I'm getting a spark length of uh, 49 inches so far. Secondary coil is wound on a piece of four and a half inch PVC. You can't see it because it's, there's a piece of six inch PVC covering over it. Uh, it's wound up with a uh, number 22 gauge wire to a winding length of 33 inches. The primary coil is wound on a piece of 12 and a half inch diamond PVC. It's five filler wound with number 12 gauge stranded wire, 49 turns all together, tapped on the 44th turn. Uh, the tickler coil is wound well, with number 22 gauge wire and it's, uh, there's about 35 turns here all together but it's, it's got different taps and it's tapped on about the uh, uh, somewhere between 15 and 20 turns there. The primary capacitance is 550 picofarads, which is 0 0.00055 microfarads. Uh, resonant frequency is 287 kilohertz, and the coefficient of coupling is 0.186. Okay, we'll go in for a closer look here. This is the pole transformer that drives this thing. It's a 7200 volt 5 kVA transformer uh, out of its oil bath. And I'm um, using a voltage doubler circuit with it to drive the tube. When I first started building this, I didn't think I was going to be using a voltage doubler circuit, but uh, I experimented around with it some and uh, I just like the way it works out. I get a lot more power throughput, uh, longer sparks. Of course this this operates in half wave mode. During one half of the cycle the coil is doing nothing and the capacitors are getting charged up. And during the other half of the cycle the energy from the capacitors and the transformer are driving the tube. And here's the filament transformer. It's a converted microwave oven transformer. Uh, it's seven and a half volts at uh, about 95 amps for the tube filament. I'd, uh, kind of jerry-rig uh, tube socket here. Uh, the only tube socket I could find cost about $400. So I, I rigged up these connections for the tube filament. And we'll go over to the grid resistors here. I have a total grid resistance of uh, 4,000 ohms and the grid capacitor is 1,200 picofarads. Uh, and we'll take a look at the primary capacitor here. Now these are ceramic capacitors from the Ukraine that I got on eBay. They're 3,300 picofarads each and there's six of them in series. When I was first building this I was using wine bottle capacitors uh, to get 
to get the equivalent amount of capacitance, it took two wine bottles with, with salt water uh, in series. Uh, they they worked reasonably well, but at, at high power, they, they he couldn't run them very long, maybe no more than a few seconds without them breaking. Sometimes, uh, one thing I like about them was. You could tell how much voltage there was in the plate circuit by the amount of corona that I had uh, around the bottle tops. You can see I have a lot of plastic over the secondary coil there. Uh, with a high powered coil like this there's a tendency for arcing to flash over from the secondary coil to the tickler coil. So I, as you can see, I got a piece of six inch PVC uh, completely covering the secondary coil, which is on the inside there, one on the four inch PVC. And also the eight inch PVC extends up pretty high. It's all to keep the from having flashover from the secondary coil. When I first started running this thing, I had a different primary. I used to have the primary wound on the inner eight inch piece of PVC uh, right below the tickler coil there. And at that time I wasn't too happy with the performance, so I went to this larger 12 and a half inch diameter primary uh, with number 12 wire. Uh, it has about the same amount of turns, uh, but for some reason the new primary works a lot better. Uh, of course it does have more inductance, uh, so I'm using a smaller capacitance in, in the tank circuit there. Uh, but I don't know if it's the, the coverage of the field or if it's... Uh, or, L to C ratio there, what it is, but but it does work a lot better for me. And the other things that seemed to make a pretty big difference was uh, the the coupling. The, like most tube coils, the coupling on this is pretty tight. The bottom of the secondary is about even with the bottom of the primary. Uh, So one thing about coupling being that way is uh, when you make changes on your primary taps, if you just change one turn or two turns, it doesn't really change the tuning that much. Uh, you really only notice it if you change a whole bunch of turns. But that and uh, the height of the tickler coil seem to make uh, some difference in, in the spark. I got it pretty much the optimum level there for for me. Just for the sake of comparison here, here's my little baby tube coil. It runs at about uh, four to five kilowatts. And I get uh, about two foot long sword-like sparks. The, bigger coil puts out real bushy sparks. Yeah, as you can see the the coil geometry is pretty similar. Okay, we're ready to do a run here. I got that metal ball hanging from the ceiling uh, exactly 50 inches above the top of the secondary. And we'll see if the sparks can hit it. Uh, so here we go. Yeah. <laughs> 